Greetings, beloved. I'm Dr. Felicia LaBoy, lead pastor and life coach here at the historic First United Methodist Church in downtown Elgin, Illinois, with another motivational moment from the Bible. These motivational moments are designed to help you take what you hear in church on Sunday, what you may learn in Sunday school, what you may even read during your private devotional time, to take those biblical concepts and to make them a part of your everyday life. If you joined us for Ash Wednesday, you know that the theme for Lent for our church is soul reset, soul reset. And as I've explained to people in our church before, uh, when we talk about the soul, the soul is not some esoteric kind of thing, right? Um, but your soul is basically your mind, your will, and your emotions your mind, your will, and your emotions. Here's an easy way to think about who we are. We are spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. Get it? We are spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body. And even though our spirit, God is renewed and is renewing our spirit, and we have the Holy Spirit to train us, to teach us, to help us to mature, as we talked about last week, our soul is often the thing that gets us into trouble. Researchers have found that of the some 80, 90 thoughts that we have, the majority of those thoughts are um, unconscious and they're negative. You all know that if you think a particular thing, if you think a thought, right? So like if I, th if I say chocolate cake, it produces a feeling maybe, right? Some people are like, I love chocolate cake, right? And then it produces an action. And so this Lenten season, we are focusing on how to help our soul reset. What are some practices, some spiritual disciplines we can do to really help us get into spiritual shape so that we might do the things that God has created us for? We might do the good works, as it says in Philippians, that God has created us for. One of the things is, um, I think, that we have to kind of measure where we're at. Let me see if I can explain. You know, we are at the end of February, going into March, you know, time for spring break, if that's your thing. But, you know, hints of warm weather are everywhere, right? Perhaps some of you, like me, are beginning to recognize and to realize, um, well, I gained a little more weight than I intended to over the season. I've, I've got to, something doesn't quite fit right. My spring and summer clothes aren't looking the way that they should. Some of us kind of do this spring cleaning thing where we air things out, we change our linens, do all this other kind of stuff. But basically, that's what we're talking about doing with our souls. So the first question has to be, beloved, where are you and who are you? What do you mean, Pastor Felicia? Let me see if I can make this as simple as possible. When it comes to sin in our lives, when it comes to not measuring up, not doing what God intended us to do, right? Where we miss the mark, we lose our temper, we think a thought that we shouldn't. We do all kinds of stuff, right? That's what we do. It's not who we are. Who we are is beloved children of God and God never changes on that. It's our behavior he's trying to deal with. So this idea about where are you and who are you, I want to reinforce this idea that God is not concerned about our who. That's settled. We are beloved children of God, whom he loves and in whom's well pleased. He delights in us. It's like when you see the mother of a convicted criminal and she's like, but Johnny's a good boy. God feels that way about us, but he loves us too much to leave us where we are. And he invites us over and over again to invite him to shine the, the light of the Holy Spirit into our hearts, into our souls, into our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, and change us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, well, actually in the whole book of 1 Corinthians, um, the issue with the Corinthian church is not that they're not a gifted people. They are gifted. These, this is a, uh, a, a church of people who made good, right? They were working class people and they'd done well and they made good. The issue is they are spiritual babies. Oh, yes, they can pray. They sing. They, 
They um, they do all kinds of stuff, but they haven't learned to love one another. They haven't learned um, a higher way of being. And so even in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 we're on the thing about love, what Paul is highlighting to them is, look, you have all these spiritual gifts. Yes, you can prophesy, you can do this and that, but you don't even know how to love people. You don't know how to love people that are your brothers and sisters because you've factioned off into cliques, some like Paul, some like Apollo. You've uh, you look down on people who you think are less than you. That's the whole thing about 1 Corinthians 11, eating unworthily. It's the people who have to work at a different time that can't get to the to the table of God. And so Paul is convicting them on how they are splitting the body of Christ according to the ways of the world. Um, they are having lawsuits with one another. It's all kinds of foolishness going on in Corinth. And so Paul really in 1 Corinthians is trying to help the people in Corinth understand your giftedness doesn't matter to God at all. What God is trying to do is he is trying to get you to be who he wants you to be. And you all are selling for external trappings rather for this inward place of being that's marked by grounded in love of God and love of neighbor, as we said last week. First Corinthians 10, he's responding to the church and he's saying, listen, you have a model of what not to do. And he begins to go through how the children of Israel acted in the wilderness, the ways that they complained, the ways that they were destroyed, how they, um, you know, how they tested God. And he's saying, you know, these stories. These stories are included in your spiritual heritage so as to teach you a lesson about what not to do, to help you have a spiritual check that this is not the way you should go. The people in uh, with Moses, he goes through, they're, they're practicing sexual immortality. They have golden idols. Well, Pastor, we're not making a golden calf. No, but if there's something in your life that's an idol, he's he's laying on all of these things. At the very heart of things is the um, Corinthians' pride. They think because they've exemplified some spiritual gifts, because they're a church that's got it going on, that they are the mucky muck, the elite, this, that, and the other. They think that all of that exempts them from falling. And Paul is clear with them all throughout the text. He's saying, listen, I have to discipline myself daily. I may not want to do these things, but I've got to discipline myself daily because even I, the apostle Paul, can fall. And so he says to them in this really powerful chapter on uh, 1 Corinthians 10, where people think that they're above all that, maybe because they think that they're just too good. He says, let me, let me show you something. Let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he falls. All of us, beloved, have some kind of Achilles heel. It's what makes us human. We have issues, some of us, with anger. We have issues, some of us, with we are people pleasers, right? We have issues, some of us, that we are greedy. We have issues with some of us that we overspend. We have issues with some of us that we think that we're better. We have issues with some of us that we are disobedient at heart. We we believe that we are the captain of our own ships. Beloved, do you understand God has so much more for us? That's what Psalm 139 talks about. That God is, when, when David invites God to search him and to try him, he starts off with all that God has already created him and given him to be. And so what David is saying, God, I want to be everything that you want me to be. I want everything, God, that you have for me. So search me. Let me know where there are things in my life that are not lining up with your will and your very best for me. Teach me, God. Look at my anxieties. Am I being driven by fear? Look at the ways that I offend you because I don't want to make the mistake like some of us have made, right? We can eat and do whatever we want all winter and then we find out that uh, not ready for spring break or I got to stop and do something or maybe I had some goals I set in January and I'm not in alignment with those. 
What David is saying in this passage is saying, it says, let him who thinks he stands or let her who thinks she stands, take heed, pay attention, invite God. Invite God to remind us who we are and to investigate where we are so that he might turn our weaknesses and that he might be the strength for our weakness. That he might make us who he needs to be. Beloved, I pray that you'll stick around for this week's Refresh Your Soul moment. It is um, the University of Arkansas Inspirational Chorale. It's a song by Christopher Brunson. It says, what if God is unhappy with our praise? So many of us are locked into what we think worship should be like or what we think the Christian walk should be like. What if God doesn't intend that for us? What if God is intending something so much more? What if God is unhappy with the praise that we offer, with the giving that we offer? What if God is calling us up a little higher? Many of us don't think about whether or not God is pleased with us, but beloved, that's the point. We want to get home and hear God say, well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. Not faithful based on what we measure as faithfulness, but based on what he measures as faithfulness. So stick around for this week's Refresh Your Soul moment. And I pray that you'll join me every week of uh, Lent as we look at soul reset. What is it that we need to do so that we might grow and, and mature in our Christian discipleship? Beloved, I am Dr. Felicia LeBoy, lead pastor, life coach here at the historic First United Methodist Church in downtown Elgin, Illinois. Be blessed. I'll see you here next week.